Hey, Leather, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. You know, it's early for me, but I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm sorry for that, for this. But... It's okay. It, it's worth it. I wanted to meet you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. It's, it's a big pleasure for me to have you here. So let's start to talk about uh, your last album that was re released uh, last year, We Are the Chosen. What can you tell about this album in general, lyrics, music, well, and everything? It was something that came out, of course, during COVID. Um, Pre-COVID, um, a lot of my musical life was in chaos. I lost a tour in 19 and everything was kind of in shambles. And then boom, COVID hit, right? Couldn't do anything, couldn't go anywhere. So my guitar player, Vinny Tex, and I decided to... Um, to write a record. It's like, hey, let's see if we can really work together, you know, because everyone else kind of split amongst their ways. Um, so we had a lot of time, which uh, I'm not very patient. So, you know, it helped a lot, but we had a lot of time and a lot of time to think through it. And it's kind of um, a positively angry record for me is what I say. You know, I had to gather all my thoughts and get, get it all back together. First song we take back control, it, it set the whole, you know, story for the whole record. It was just about me getting my act together, taking control of my own musical life. And um, and again, we had two years to work on it. So it came out pretty good, I think. Yeah, it's a good album. Thank and, you. And you have to be proud of it. Also, you are a legend in the metal world. You have been uh, on the scenes uh, since uh, the early 80s, before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> because I, yes. I was born in the 86 so <laughs> oh <laughs> so yeah. you you, uh, you were you were on the on the best uh, <laughs> of your yoff uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah ruler um, mystery evolution came out in 85 right yeah i hooked up with chastain i moved to california in 82 probably started singing metal in 83 uh mystery evolution came out in 85 yeah it's funny i say that to my guitar player Vinny. Um, I'll say, hey, remember Mystery of Illusion or whatever, this chord, this key. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You weren't even born yet. Never mind. <laughs> funny. Do you feel that the time uh, just fly? Because I have this uh, this feeling that time is just fly. And I feel like always young, but time to just go, go by in a moment. You know, it's, it's funny that you say that. I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday that everyone always says, oh, time flies, time flies. I never noticed it until I would say like the past three or four years. It's always freaking Christmas. But yeah, don't even think about it. You're way too young. But I think the older you get, you're like, damn, it was just my birthday. So I'm noticing it now. Yes. Yeah, so just enjoy every minute. You're too young. Don't think about it. Yeah, but still, I'm I one that start to think about this. How was it? it was ninety nine was last year. <laughs> but no, yeah. It can as, be I, think, is, uh... I think it's especially when you're busy when you know we're so involved in music and stuff that sometimes we're just tunnel vision and then you look around and go shit it's five years ago you know <laughs> yeah. long time. But uh, you start uh, with uh, the girl band Rud Girl. Yes. Then. Uh, uh, the band split up and uh, became sort of uh, Malibu Barbie. Yes, they they went away and did Malibu Barbie. Yes, I just did that EP with them. I did a couple songs with them. I was in between Chastain tours and their singer, Steven, for some reason he couldn't make it into the studio that day. And they called me up and said, hey, are you around? Will you come and do this? So yeah, I just did that. That's my only affiliation with them. Yeah. And then with... Uh, uh, just yeah, just I'm so bad. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so oh, bad God. sometimes with English. <laughs> or well, oh, you're, you're that... doing very well. Yeah, Mike Varney. Mike Varney had become a friend of mine when I moved to San Francisco. Of course, he was the big guitar shrapnel metal label. So he hooked me up with David Chastain after Rude Girl fell apart. Yeah, and you did seven albums together, studio albums. Yes. Which one is your favorite of the of those albums? Do you have one? Probably not, because it's really hard for me to listen to stuff after I do it. Um, although I really do like the production on We Bleed Metal, which was the last one. But 
you know, when you really make me think about it, I think it's probably the first one, Mystery of Illusion, because Christine, it was such a big deal for me. I was in a freaking studio and I didn't know what I was doing. And I was so nervous and I was really green. I was just singing off the cuff of my pants, you know? Um, and also the studio that we were at, Prairie Sun, which is actually just up the street here. Um, I, C Cliff Burton was hanging around back then with the band Trauma. I met Fred Corey. It, it was just a brand new experience. So I think Mystery of Illusion, it's just all these memories come back. So probably that one. Not vocally, but the yeah. whole story. Yeah. Yeah. It was the, a new experience back then for you. Yeah. It was exciting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there I was hanging with, hanging with other boys, you know, and I'm like, hey, let me show you how to sing. So, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Um, so when you told about uh, you were hanging out around the boy, uh, I was thinking that uh, back then in the 80s, how was to be a famous singer in a world that was uh, predominantly of male you know i don't i get that question a lot i think i have such an ego i never noticed um look there was one thing that i, I could sing i knew that i could sing i've always been a show off i felt that i could sing just as good as them um and i think that chastain protected me from that a lot too i have to tell you some of the stories that he tells me now certain things that we didn't get because i was the chick but in my own head and in my own world, I never noticed it. Yeah. I used to I used to help the roadies. I used to love to carry the guitars in, you know, and all the people go, oh, my God, look, they have a chick roadie, you know, and then I would there I would be a sound check going, yeah, this is the freaking roadie, dude, you know, but I never noticed. Yeah, uh -huh. it doesn't I don't that does stuff doesn't affect me. Are you that kind of uh, person that when it's with uh, friends or around people don't see if it's a guy or a girl, see just people that uh, if you if yeah. you feel uh, comfortable with them, then exactly, people. especially in music, especially in music, I, people go, oh yeah, they you know the band with the girl bass player. Nobody says, oh yeah, the one with the guy drummer. I mean, I don't. And I'm going to tell you, I, I you know, the women have always been around when I've been on, they've always been there. Just no one was paying attention to them, but there were all these female musicians. But no, I don't notice it. You know, music is really, um, it's a really hard thing to do. Um, so anybody that's doing it, I applaud them because it's it's really a challenge. It's really a challenge to do music. So power right. to them. Easy. Uh, how do you uh, feel or how do you see the music world, the metal world, uh, uh, has changed nowadays compared to the 80s of course well, all the so social media things but uh, what, e what, what, media. What, what else do you do you see that i i social media drives me crazy um <laughs> again my guitar player Vinny, who's your age um you know he helps me do all that stuff you know it's not about talent it's about being popular um, so music is really different. I thought there were a lot of bands out then. It's insane now. People don't need studios anymore. People don't need direction. Anybody can go online and make music. So I think it's harder to stand out. Like I said, it's about being popular. It's nothing about talent. I can remember back in the 80s thinking it was nothing about talent, but it's really not. Um, I don't like the whole digital age as opposed to, you know, pre -dig I would rather be in a studio with a two inch tape there was something different about that recording process. Um, now everything is so damn perfect. Everything has to be made so perfect. I like the imperfection of the records in the eighties um, when they had to punch stuff in and when uh, you would hear a breath and you'd hear a slight off key note. Uh, it, it's, I mean, I do it because I have to, but it's a little too, um, it's too perfect for me. You know, all the filters and all the digital, yeah. Um, I'm very, I'm so grateful to be a part of it, but yeah, it's, um, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's, uh, I was talking last year with uh, a Finnish band, a rock band, and they did, they record a new album, uh, just uh, as it came, uh, the singer told me that he had to redo just the, the last, uh, 
part of a song because he got emotional and he started singing. So he was unable to finish the song. Right, and right. Uh, he had to do just the, the last part and they had just to cut and... Uh, of and course, yeah. Paste. yeah. But otherwise it was all live, all uh, at the moment. Yeah, and, and I prefer that. that. They prefer, I, I prefer that. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I fought in the studio constantly. <laughs> Um, for stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I like I said, I like hearing the, the pops and the mouth sounds and the squeaking of an acoustic guitar. Um, I think emotion is far more important. But since this was, you know, the biggest record that I've ever done, and it was in a huge studio. I mean, it, it was a fight for me all the time. That's the way it is. Everything sounds, you know, but it's interesting because in the 80s, I have to tell you, I used to listen to all these records and then I would go see the bands. And of course, it never sounded the same. And so that was my goal with Chastain. I said, I need my vocals to sound like that goddamn record. So that was my thing. You know, that's that's yeah. what I worked worked at. Yeah. So you are a perfectionist. No, it's really funny. I'm not, but I just want my vocals. I'm kind of egotistic. I'm, I'm narcissistic when it comes to my vocals. I have to be really good. I have to be really on top of it. Yeah, yeah. What's about uh, live gigs? Uh, do you have any coming right now? I do. Um, God, as soon as I get off um, this call with you, I'm yeah, I'm dealing with so many people. Um, I got the Life After Death Horror Fest in Mexico, December first, which is going to be huge. I'm so excited about that, and I'm going to have some connecting shows to that that I I can't speak about yet. But I'm always trying to get on the road. And again, um, COVID really set everything backwards, you know, that everybody's trying to catch up and I'm not in that catch up loop because I wasn't touring then. So, um, you know, I'm 2024 is what I'm really um, looking forward to, but I'm always trying to get on the road. Yeah. Yeah. What's the best thing about uh, going on tour? Sharing music with everybody, you know, I mean, um, I heard Dio one time say that, it's actually in his book that he believes that he that he was a messenger, you know, and I kind of picked that up from him. I'm just here to do metal for all of us, you know, and uh, I feel really um, normal. I feel really at home on stage. That's where I want to be. I could just stand there and look around. I don't have to yeah. do anything, but I really enjoy the live performances. And again, it's I get claustrophobic in the freaking studio. You know, I can't stand still, as you can tell. And, you know, you can't chew gum and you have to you know, be careful where the screen is and you can't pop the mic and live. I can just run around and be crazy. It's stressful. You know? Yeah. I'm, I, well, look at me. I just I'm not a calm down to earth person. So the studio is really hard for me. And uh, live, you can go crazy, you know. And yeah. I'm so excited about Mexico because there's a few people that I have been speaking with on social media for years and I'm finally going to get to see the face, you know, so it'll be good. It'll be good. Yeah. Nice. Uh, let's talk about uh, metal music. How did you get into heavy music? Uh, when did you start to listen? And what was the thing that got you there? The thing that got me there was, um, uh, Dio, listening to Sabbath and Dio for the first time. And I, I was a late bloomer. Um, like I said, I think it was 82 that I moved here to uh, San Francisco across the bridge. I auditioned for Rude Girl probably in that year. And I sang Heart. I was singing a heart tune. And uh, they looked at me and said, hey, do you know who Bon Scott is? I said, yeah, I know who he is. And they said, why don't you try to sing like him? And I couldn't sing like him, but I, my throat, it was, it was a happy place for me. And then I heard, uh, then I got turned on to Dio and Sabbath again. And I was like, that freaking power, that aggression, those minor chords. So, uh, you know, then I just, I probably practiced in the studio with them probably a good, maybe even a good year before I went out to sing publicly. Um, my voice always wanted to go there, but I had to hone it in, you know? So it was the power, the power of metal. Once I heard it, you know, ugh. It was insane. It was crazy. You know, Maidens and then the Queen's Right came out. And yeah, so I was a late bloomer, but when it hit me, it hit me like a freaking truck. I was like, ah, yeah. That's it. That's <laughs> yeah. 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 It fit my personality. You know, it fits my personality. I could get my aggression out there. So yeah, that's that's true. That true music you you can express what you, you have inside. Yeah, and we feel it. I think as metal people, it's just ah. Uh, 
I mean, yeah. what is heavy? What is heavy? It's just something that it breathes in our soul. So yeah, but it was Dio for sure. Dio Sabbath. Yeah. I think that the Dio was, uh, personally was my favorite singer. If, oh, if, if, I, if I take someone to the, to the voice, yeah. Yes. Dio was the I mean, I would, I would be backstage with him at places when he was really, really tired. His voice was really burnt and he would just go on stage and wail this I mean, he was shorter than me, you know, but yeah, he was, he, he was such a, um, such a gifted artist. So gifted his sense of melody and his phrasing. I mean, I, I just listen to him all the time, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's rare to have those people. So talented. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, they he, stay he in the rare. history forever and uh, forever. everybody, yeah. even if they, they, don't listen to metal. I think that everybody knows who who he. They was. do, they do. I bring them up a lot to really straight people or just non-metal people. Yeah, they all know Ronnie Dio yeah. or Ronnie James Dio. Yeah. I miss them. Yeah, and are you listening now to something in particular? Any band or album or? Yeah, you know who I love. Um, Sla is it Slaughterhouse Five? No. Or slaughter to prevail, slaughter to prevail. Yeah, I I don't do extreme music, but dude, I freaking love extreme music. A uh, ginger, I love Tatiana. Oh, oh my god, she's. Oh. I tell you one thing. I saw Ginger for the first time uh, at the end of July in Tusca in Helsinki. Yeah, yeah. And, I, uh, I was insane, like, I right? said after the gig, I went to my boyfriend and told him. You know, for a moment, I became lesbian because she has that I love energy her. that I, love I was like, oh, my God, she's like yes. amazing. You know, you, you know who my girl crushes, though? I listen to Spirit Box. Courtney La LaPlatz, is that Yeah. Him? Oh, my God. That is my girl crush. I heard her. When When did when did a Holy Roller come out? I don't know. I was like, who the hell? Yes, I... And a lot of people ask me about, about the progression of metal and what I think, because when I came out, I was heavy. I was heavy in the 80s. Yeah. Or, and these, uh, these people have just taken it. But yeah, I am so proud of these chicks. I can't tell you. But I, I listen to extreme metal, Lamb of God. I love their last yeah. record. I just listened to liquid metal. Um, uh, um, I, uh, Pantera. Oh my God, Phil. <sighs> Please. You know, I always wanted to be a boy. So I, I look at Phil and I, sometimes I DM him and go, can we do a song together? You know, <laughs> but yeah, I listen, I, I'm listening to uh, those type of things. I listen to um, Arch Enemy. I love her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like all of it. I like all of it. Isn't there a band called Kubla Khan or something? Yeah, I just heard them going. I love all that, all those devil effects, you know, it just, it makes you go, ah, oh, I like it. Yeah, I like it all. but it's, I don't I don't know what's in the you know the extreme metal but there is something that grow inside and it's it's uh, yeah it's just a, yeah. I I don't know I <laughs> I feel emotional listening to oh that. absolutely and it's funny because I love melody and they don't have a lot of melody but that freaking power and that's what I always liked about Randy from Lamb of God it, even through all his cookie monster, you can freaking understand everything that guy says. Yeah. His pronunciation in that growl is insane. Anyway, yeah, that's what I'm listening to. And of course, I always do Dio and Tate. They're always there, but I like yeah. I like to listen to extreme metal. Um, I put some stuff, uh, some little uh, inklings of it on my record. Um, I would, <laughs> I tried to do a few stuff, but Vinny would be like, "No, no, babe, that's that's not this kind of record." But yeah, I, I, I put a little things in there as my ode to extreme metal. Yeah. Uh, what what is in your opinion the best metal album, the one that is close to your heart? Oh God, that's a tough one. Uh, Heaven and Hell, probably. Heaven and Hell. Um, the Number of the Beast. Uh, Holy Diver was a really good mm, kind of yeah. commercial. Yeah, but d definitely Heaven and Hell. Yeah, that yeah. Heaven and Hell record. Um, yeah, God, there's so many, so many. But yeah, I mean, it's just Sabbath in general. Um, and you know what else I really, really like? It's rolled me over. I know it was a really popular album, Dehumanizer. That Sabbath record, Dehumanizer. Um, yeah. You could tell you could tell that Ronnie was going through a lot of personal struggle then. 
and just what he was talking about. And I know, like I said, that record wasn't big, but I, I listened to that really intricately lately. You know, I listen to these records and I, I say this to my guitar player, Vinny, that um, this was really the first record that I was involved with from start to finish. I didn't just go in and do my parts and leave. I was there from the beginning. So I really saw the whole process from the drums to the mixing, you know? Um, so now I can't, it's kind of ruined me. I can't really listen to a song. I'm going, what are the drums doing? What? So now my mind breaks it up and I hear everything in pieces, which is actually yeah. good for my ears, but yeah. Yeah. And uh, talking about band that you have seen live, because of course uh, you were touring, you were playing along alongside with other big bands, uh, uh, but which one is the best show that you ever seen the the one that uh, you were like the one that, the, like, the best show i've ever seen um yes i don't know probably again when i first met ronnie and i saw him at the probably the holy diver tour i saw him in mountain view um and the, he had the big dragon and all the uh, keyboards yeah probably holy diver and, and the number of the beast who is insane it was just those early metal bands um, and I can actually even remember seeing um, Metallica, you know, we were obviously in the same area before they got signed. They did a show at the Stone, which is gone now, but I can remember really be, been taken back by that too. That was probably one of my first real metal shows. Um, and I was just blown away by their conviction. Yeah, probably. And I don't, God, that was probably, I don't know when they got signed. It was probably 84, 83 or 84 when I saw Metallica and then definitely Holy Diver, Number of the Beast. Yeah. Those, two, those three those three are the big the big, the big yeah. yeah 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 i don't i don't go to shows much anymore it's interesting and when i go i'm usually i don't usually go out in front anymore i'm usually hobnobbing in the back so i don't really see a lot of stuff anymore yeah i need to change that i need to change <laughs> that <laughs> and i have some i had something in the back of my mind let me get to what was that okay Oh yeah. Uh, you met a lot of artists for sure. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you big friend with some of those people that are uh, still on the scene? Oh uh, yeah. I mean, I know Doro and um, of course, Ronnie's gone. I know the guys from Wasp. I mean, I know Metallica. I mean, I, I don't speak with them all the time. No, but if we saw each other, we would know each other. But like I said, I'm kind of, I'm coming out of that, out of that whole scene. Um, I actually, Tony, I just went and hung out with them. Yeah. I hang out with them all the time. Um, but I, I, I've been concentrating so hard since 2019 to get my musical shit together. I got to tell you, I'm really not much of a party person. Um, Everybody obviously asked me that. Oh my God, when you were on the road in the 80s, it must have been. No, man, when I was on the road in the 80s, I was running and working out and sleeping and drinking water. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still part of the scene for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But let's go to the fun question. There was a fun that asked something. Okay. So, let's see if I can find the question in a moment. Maybe it was. Oh, I saw one. I saw one. You the guy so, had asked me. Yeah, somebody, so, had, somebody had asked what heavy I did. Maybe metal melodies. Ask in addition oh. to music, do you have any other interest or hobbies that you enjoy? Greeting, greetings, and a big, and Hugs. A big huge, from yes, from I am a. Uh, I, I work with I work with animals. I have two passions: animals and music. I still work with animals. Um, I'm, I'm huge into nature. Like I just go you know, hanging out of the ocean at night. I love the nighttime as soon as the sun goes down. I'm really into old movies. I watch old movies from the 30s and the 40s. I'm a huge geek when it comes to documentaries and history. Um, but I'm pretty much a loner, you know, I do all these things by myself. So I like yeah. being alone and enjoying the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You are one of those people that enjoy that uh, self yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's important to have the self time. Yeah, yeah. My my, it's funny. My mom told me that I was I was like that too as a little kid. She said that you would just go. Um, I would just go sit in my room for hours and just entertain myself. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you were an easy, uh, a easy kid for your parents, maybe. Yeah, 
Yes. Because I could entertain myself. Yeah. Yeah. My mom always said that. She said, you were just, you know, close the door by yourself. So they didn't have to worry about me too much. And I'm still like that. So Yeah. So it's it's nice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so now let's go to to my jar of uh, Oh, cool. Topics. Okay. Let's see what you are going to get. We are choosing two. Let's see what okay. one is the first one, what we are going to talk next. I'm taking this and we have a gift, gift. Uh, do you like to more to give or receive a gift? Oh, I like right. to give them, give, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm the same. I like the surprise effect or see the, yeah. the face yeah. of the person. I like yeah. to choose something that the person is going to like. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see the reaction also. Yes, me too. And uh, do you ever get gift from your fans? Oh, yeah, all the time. Um, I get clothes and people do drawings for me and people write me songs and send me flowers. Sometimes I, I still get flowers. Nice. You, you know, because I have I have like a public office address, you know. Yeah, yeah I get stuff all the time. It's, it's very, you know... It's really, well, when I was young, I was into Donny Osmond, of course, right? Way before your time in the 70s. Um, and I used to dress in purple because of, yeah. But I was never, I was never a fan of anybody where like I did those kind of things where I never bought anything because they wore it or I never tried to write them letters or anything. So me being in that position, it's really bizarre and lovely that somebody takes the time to do that. You know? That, that, yeah. I mean, the words that they send me, that somebody actually, that I inspire somebody enough for them to do. It's amazing. It's so humbling. And I'm so grateful. It's yeah. really cool. It's really cool. It's yeah, I like it. Uh, yeah. What is the most bizarre gift that you ever received? <laughs> I can tell you right now, um, there's a woman uh, on Instagram who's become a friend of um, Vinny and I. Her name is Jane. I'm sorry. I can't think of her last name, but look her up. She's a... Um, she does fitness, bodybuilding kind of things, you know, so she's yeah. always showing her journey. And she, lovely woman. Thank you, Jane, so much. And she sent me, uh, us, but I live in the U.S. and he lives in Brazil. God, I wish I knew where it was right now. But I got this thing with a card. She said, oh, congratulations to you and Vinny, and we have the chosen and the hostess boxers. And I open it up, and it's a freaking sword. It's this huge knife that's engraved, we are the chosen. I'm going to post it on Instagram today because she brought yeah. it to me. It is so gorgeous. This huge samurai thing that's in, wow. amazing. And I, I don't know how she thought to even do that. And she said to me, was it too much? I'm like, it was amazing. So yeah, I got well, a machete. This, this is a, a weird one, but I think it's really so expensive. Thoughtful. Something like this. Uh, so yeah. You know. And I, I don't even, you know, I keep it all in the box. I mean, it's so beautiful. But I'm going to post it today and I'll, I'll yeah. tag you in it so you can see it. So thoughtful Wait. and bizarre. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> nice. And uh, uh, talking about gift, because your voice, your musicality is a gift. It uh, is, yeah. Do you always add this, this gift to sing, to be on a stage? Uh, if you think when you were a, a child, well, I was always um, the show off. You know, I was always the one that would get in front of people. I would always be the one that would get in front of the class and sing. Um, and then I started singing in church and I was always the one that would volunteer. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. And I'm sure I wasn't very good, but I just had the balls, you know, certain things you just have to get out and do it. And I can remember one time um, I went to the 10th. I was raised Italian Catholic, of course. So we had this 1030 mass and it was a choir, but it was a really cool choir. We would sing Fleetwood Mac and all these really contemporary songs. And we did how we did Stairway to Heaven. And I got to sing the first verse and I was I'm sure I sounded terrible. But I had a huge church, like 200 people. And I can remember looking at everybody and going, wow, and seeing what what thoughts you could have and feelings you could evoke in people. We were just talking about extreme metal, right? And I'm going, yeah. And that was a real connection for me. I think I was in eighth grade. 
And it just, and then I knew I wanted to do something musically, but still whatever. I just sang all the time. Um, and then I went to college for musical theater. That was never enough for me. It was never aggressive enough for me. So of course I quit college every semester. Yeah. Um, and I think when I, um, when, again, Sabbath and Dio in the early eighties, when I heard that is when I really got serious. I joined this band and that's when I really got serious and tried to figure out how to sing, tried to figure out how to do it properly. But like I said, I was just a show off. I didn't I was like, oh my God, I have to be a singer. No, I just wanted everybody to look at me. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's fun to think that you start in the church singing yeah. and you went to metal so <laughs> how was the reaction of your family because of for a my family my family was great they were great my dad's gone now but they used to come and see me with Justine they'd go to because I'm from upstate New York but they would come to Ohio to see me they would go down to New York City no my 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 mother is still she's so proud of me um I mean uh, I went home not too long ago and they had the we are the chosen video on the big screen I'm from a really small town you know and there's everybody watching it but they did used to say to me my mother used to go to me my name is Catherine I'm Kathy Kathy Epson she used to go Kathy why is it that you use that F word, honey, so much? And when you use it, everybody gets so excited. So the language used to really bother them, but no, they were they were cool. Yeah. Very proud of me. Always very proud of me. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Because not not everybody in particular, if uh, there, there is a, a religious family, yeah. not everybody get the support. Yeah. No, my, my family was always really cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah, nice. So let's yeah. get another another okay. piece of paper from this jar and let's that's see. That's a good idea. That's a really yeah. good idea. That's that's uh, some something nice, something something different. So we got school. Oh God. <laughs> so as you say, oh God, I was maybe you were school was not your favorite. <laughs> No, it, it was a performance for me. Again, uh, I just wanted everybody to, it, it was a party. My mother used to say everything, everything was a party to me. And of course I was a cheerleader, which everybody laughs at, but at my school, cheerleading was freaking serious. You know, those were the people that, I, I didn't party in high school, but those were the people that partied. We were the F, we were hardcore. Um, no, I wasn't particularly good in school. Um, it didn't interest me. Uh, like I said, it was a performance for me. I just wanted to be out with people. Um, I wanted to check out the world. And when I say, um, when I say college, I say it very loosely because like I said, I, I would quit college every semester. Um, I, it's when I started singing in bands. I never went to class. Uh, it was my first time away from home. I was outside of New York City. I was just singing in bands and having a blast. So school is always said very lightly in my, in my lifetime, but I'm glad that I, that I that I did go to college. I mean, it gave me a lot of experience, but no, academically, no. Yeah, <laughs> That's I, I I can relate. I was at school like the, I was terrible, and I yeah. remember that I had this thing. Uh, uh, we start to study English when around when I was eleven, twelve. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, the teacher was thinking that everybody knew the basic, like the numbers. I, I was like, I don't know nothing. You didn't so know anything, I, yeah. I was like, I'm not going to learn English, never. I don't like it. But then uh, after, when I was adult in my 20s, then I was, I need to speak English. Yeah, and especially start, in what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I start yeah. to learn by myself. And I think that school was uh, really tra traumatic for me. <laughs> yeah then, well you know there's a real connection that you have to have everybody shouldn't be teaching and my senior year um I connected with a couple of teachers too that really they really took the time to get to know me so then it was more of a friendship then I was interested in what they were trying to teach me but I think that's a really incredible job being a teacher but yeah um school was just a party it was like oh what am I going to wear today you know yeah and I always tried to be I, I was an athlete so I was always trying to play with the guys you know I always wanted to not be a guy but I always wanted to be able to compete with the guys so when I think when I got into music there was a really st a strong motivation for me yeah it was all dudes and I was like okay okay 
Yeah, I, I would never back down from that. And those are the voices that I like, although as we were talking about Tatiana and the power, um, you know, back in my day, females didn't have a lot of power. You know, it was the hearts and the Benatars, um, you know, it was beautiful voices, but uh, it wasn't like that. So I wanted to yeah. be like that. Yeah. So you like the challenge to have a yeah. challenge. So when you were at school, you were like challenging the boys also, maybe in the yeah. In the yeah. I know, was always I would I, I would go to their baseball practice. I would go to their baseball practice and try to pitch like them. And I was a cheerleader, but I'd be out in the field trying to catch balls and stuff. I just I don't know. I think everyone has a form of a of aggression in them uh, because we all have to get aggression out. You know, music is, yeah. uh, it's just done that for me. I don't go out and kill people. I sing metal music, you know, and that's, that's not a good relate relation thing at all that I said, but um, it, it gets it out. It gets my inner feelings out. You know, Every, everybody has to have that. Some people run track. I have a girlfriend that does equestrian music was always that for me. Yeah. 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 It's true. And, if you think when you were a kid at school, which one was your favorite uh, hours? Like, uh, were you a kind of uh, English person or like uh, history or... Uh... History, history. Yeah, you hit it on the head. I'm so totally into history. And of course, now in this country, we're realizing that we were taught control of history we weren't taught taught the proper things but history and that it's funny i didn't really i didn't do music in high school i i would go and do it at the church um but yeah it was history and then of course gym i loved the gym um but you know i just really liked school even though i wasn't good at it and didn't apply myself i liked school i liked being there um i liked going to math class i liked going to social studies um I just liked being in those instances, you know. Oh, another group of people over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a gym. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a party. It was a big party. In, in which one you were the you were the worst? I mean, uh, for example, math. I was really math. Bad math. <laughs> I I also had a, several problems with math. <laughs> I, I can remember, you know, I, I did want to go to college when I was young and I worked my ass off my junior year in high school. I mean, worked my ass off. And we, when we started doing algebra to get like a B minus, I mean, I worked my butt off. So it was obviously really hard for me. And it was interesting. But then I went to working with animals. I got into animal medicine and then I realized how it hurt me. I'm like, I'm never going to use this crap anyway. But there was my algebra that I never learned. So, yeah. but yes, I was, I was terrible in math, but the teacher was really good looking. So I, <laughs> <laughs> me and the girls had a lot of fun. Like, them, so. a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Also because I think about the teacher that I had, and nah, there were not good looking teachers. No. no and there were yeah. all, mostly were uh, older ladies. Really? <laughs> So it oh, was a ladies. Yeah. Yeah. That was that um, was the time. I, I remember that there was once uh, the uh, physics <laughs> teacher was on sick leave, so a younger guy came and it was oh like, a substitute. Yeah. Yeah, it was a uh, younger. It was in I think it was late twenties. Yeah, I'm not cute. sure, but yeah. it was like. Uh, not interesting in doing nothing. He was mocking uh, there in the class on the <laughs> close to the window, and we were all the girls, like, <laughs> God, so, I know that, that, yeah. that chemistry. Yeah, so it's 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 fun thinking those things nowadays. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you brought a lot of memories on for me. Thank you. So those those are, yeah, gr great memories come. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I remember you make me think when my parents dropped me off to college because it was like eight hours away. It was like where I live going to LA. That's how far away I was. And of course my mom, you know, they were crying and hugging and kissing me and they drove away. And I just turned around facing my college going, yeah, here we go. It was such, I, I was so happy that particular moment. I will never forget that great day. Yeah. It's something important when you go somewhere yeah. where you want and you feel, now it's time. Now it's my time. Yeah, now it's my time. Yeah. And I think that every time that uh, you grow up 
and then you have to change the school because I in Italy is different from uh, US or from Finland where I'm now yeah so, yeah but uh, for example we had the the from six to 11 years five years then you change the school and there are uh, three years, so you change all, all your friends uh, yeah we change. we do that we do that here in eighth grade we change in eighth grade and go for four years yeah yeah and then yeah. the three years then we have five years so again after five years three years five years so right so you're you're, you're changing your whole pattern yeah yeah, it's, it's I don't know if it's like this again. Still, I I think it's. Yeah. But I'm not sure. Yeah. So it's. Uh, I remember every time the first day of of school starting the new cycle. Yeah. It was like, oh my god, I don't know anyone. Yeah. Oh, Feeling so awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I have this memory when I was six years old. And. Uh, we went to the, it was the first day of school, school and the parents let the children there. Then I sit and the, next to me, uh, come to see this, uh, this boy. And the first thing that I ask is, uh, during the summer, uh, which beach do you use to go? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was uh, what I asked yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> you you were a reporter right from the young age. So yeah, I was you like, this, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like sometimes I think that was a stupid question for Well, you were young. We were young and stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But let's talk about pizza. Yeah. Metal pizza. So let's go to the to the to the main point. <laughs> <laughs> I think well I, I heard I heard I heard that when you asked Tony what his favorite pizza was so I've been thinking about it because I'm a vegan now but before I was vegan my, and of course my growing up as a Leone oh my god my mother obviously made the pizza but I like all kinds of extra cheese and jalapenos and tomatoes in in Tabasco and chip, anything chalupa sauce hot 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 and with cheese and now that I'm a vegan, there's a place right down the street and they make me a vegan pizza, which is a uh, uh, cauliflower um, and um, crust is what I'm trying to say. And it's sauce and they just put a whole, they, I think they, I know my mama puts fake cheese on it, but they just put a whole bunch of vegetables and greens on it. But yeah, cheese, it was cheese and jalapenos all the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where did you eat the best pizza? Oh my God. God, I, my my tendency was to say New York is that, but no, either Chicago. There's a place in Chicago by Reggie's where I used to play back in the day. But in California, you can go in, uh, in San Francisco. Uh, there's a place at, at, the, at the Castro called California Pizza. Yeah, they have some sick pizza in North Beach here in San Francisco. But Chicago was a good one too. Oh no, Christina, no, no, Brazil. I went to Brazil one of my first times. You know what they have in Brazil? Maybe they have it in your country. You go to these pizza places and you can get chocolate chip pizza, hamburger and french fry pizza, scrambled egg pizza. They put anything on pizza. My favorite pizza was milk chocolate pizza. Milk chocolate pizza? Yes. What's on, the, on the pizza? It's just like a dessert it's, it's, kind of? Yeah, but, but it's the crust. And I, they, probably, they probably don't put sauce on it, right? It's just chocolate. But they, they have like 200 different pizzas and the people just walk around with the trays and you pick at it. Um, yeah, milk chocolate pizza. And like there's a French fry pizza. I can't even tell you. Anything you can think of on a pizza. You know, a tuna sandwich pizza. I mean, it's just, and it's all so good. I just used to stuff my face and I don't know the name of it, but oh my God, when I go to Brazil in a few months, I have to go there. It's in Rio. Um, yeah. I was thinking when you were talking about those uh, pizza in Brazil, uh, in Italy, there is this uh, Nutella pizza that you get. The pizza, oh, the Nutella? The normal pizza, Nutella on, and then oh. there is some uh, whipped cream on. Oh. And it's it's good, but it's a lot. So it's they lot, don't yeah. do that uh, like the normal size. It's a bit smaller. Sure, sure, so sure. Yeah, can, yeah, yeah. can eat, but it's 
it's really yeah nice. i'm sure it's the same different it was chocolate pizza yeah, yeah you know it's funny you say that that's one of the things i really miss as a vegan nutella when i first i got turned down to that in germany when i started my first tour in germany in 2011 they have it everywhere for breakfast oh my god nutella um yeah but you're making me think extra extra cheese extra crispy and jalapenos in tabasco everywhere yeah and another pizza that is a thing in italy that in finland I haven't seen yet. Maybe, maybe, maybe someone is doing after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's the pizza with French fries on. on. Yeah, that was in Brazil. Yeah, good. Talk and, about and, cholesterol. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's a great idea. Not, not diet food for sure. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah. And you're making me think they had pizza that would come out of the oven and they would put it in front of you and then they would put a scoop of ice cream on. Oh, God. I miss all this. But yeah, I've been vegan now for, I don't know, maybe three to five. Oh, I was vegan when I recorded Surrender to No One. So Jesus, since since 2013. Yeah. yeah. So, so 10 no years more. you have been vegan. Yeah. 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 And do you find it easy to find the restaurant? Uh, In this country it is. It was When you go to Brazil, it's really hard. Um, but I, I can live on, you know... A, I can live on vegetables. It doesn't matter. But, you know, I live in California. Everything is in California. When I go home, my mama does all these vegan recipes for me. But where I am, it's not. But again, I can do a salad. I can do a salad with wedges of lemon. I'm not fussy. Give me an apple. You know, I don't care. Yeah. Because um, I do like to eat. Yeah. But no, it's, it's not hard. I, I know it's funny. Vinny always makes fun of me when I go to Brazil. It's like, no, no, because they eat meat like crazy there. Like crazy. And I'm all their um, all the buffets that we go to and stuff. But yeah, I find a way, and I always bring stuff with me too, you know. Yeah, and also I think that if you know uh, what to do with the food, how to cook, yeah, it's not yeah. that complex. Uh, I no. don't know, maybe because I'm Italian, and uh, a lot of things are uh, without yeah. it also. So sure, yeah, 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 yeah. You can do exactly. really amazing pasta. My mother the... made me, speaking of pasta, my mother made me a fake uh, fettuccine Alfredo. She made it with um, wheat, wheat noodles, and she made the sauce out of cashews. It was just like you were eating. It was so good. Yeah, so yeah, if you cook, there's uh, many ways. Yesterday uh, was the day before, I can't remember, but I did uh, some pasta and I put uh, the uh, pistacchio pesto on the top. yeah oh yeah. it was it was so perfect i'm not a vegan but sometimes i feel oh, that yeah, my, yeah. Body, my my body needs something else yes so uh, i know yeah. what what to do for myself you're i'm getting so hungry talking to you as you know it's really <laughs> early in the morning here when i'm done with you there's a Italian restaurant down the thing that just has the rigatoni with sauce and garlic. I'm going to go eat that. I'm so hungry right now with a big glass of wine. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm making you hungry. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, you know, sometimes I don't eat. I go through. And it's interesting when I'm the, on the road, I get really skinny. I just don't, food doesn't mix with my musical life um i always try to eat something like midday you know some carbs or something because i use so much energy. but i don't eat when i'm on the road and i get so thin it's not a good thing yeah i have to work on that i have to work on that learn to eat <laughs> learn yeah. to eat yeah. On tour. <gasps> yeah yeah it's important yeah uh i have an important question the most important of this interview let's get serious no uh, it's not a serious <laughs> question <laughs> It's about pizza. Do you do you think that uh, pineapple belongs to pizza? No. Okay, I was expecting a yes from you so, somehow. No. no. Um, but you know, saying that, I don't think I've ever actually eaten it. I don't think I've ever actually eaten it because I just go, what pineapple? I was talking to my friend Beatrice the other day and she said, oh my God, you have to have pizza with pineapple on it. But I, I don't, do you like it? Is it good? I've, I've never actually had it. I'm just giving yeah. pizza and pineapple. But if we're talking about ice cream on freaking pizza. So, like, you know, I might, I'm going to have to try that and I'll get back to you. Okay. <laughs> but because I have this, uh, this qu question, uh, I say that it's important because this uh, metal pizza 
start uh, joking with a friend of mine uh, where we were eating pizza before I went to do an interview with a band for a website. Uh -huh. That he was like, um, are you going to ask uh, if uh, pineapple belongs to pizza? I was no, and then it was. Make that's a good. That's a good question. Who will be something like that. So that? That was the the thing that started this. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's a great. Like I said, I saw metal pizza. And I was like, Tony, who the hell are these people? What did Tony say his favorite pizza was? I don't remember. Do you um, remember? It was. Uh, Uh, I can't remember. It was that's some... okay. Tex Tex to... Max. Uh, oh, pizza. probably. I was gonna say. I'm sure it was full of meat. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, with a lot of things on. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a boy. It boy was pizza. something like this. But it's it's funny that uh, you are the sixth person that I interview uh, mm -hmm. for this project, and uh, just one person say that in April belongo on pizza everybody else was no <laughs> so it's it's funny because i was expecting maybe like half and half yeah. Yeah. but for the moment the no yeah. is pressing. <laughs> but let's i know somebody see. i i i know somebody that works at domino's and i said to him does anybody order pineapple pineapple pizza he goes no <laughs> doesn't belong to pizza. but you know i have to try that like i said it just doesn't and it's probably very good it just doesn't yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. For me, it's like I don't like too much uh, mixing uh, salt. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Sweet. I know what you said. Salt and, salt and sugar. It's a weird one. Yeah. 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 So it's. Yeah. Uh, I, but we're Italian. We like salt, salt and spice. Yeah. Not sweet so much. Yeah. yeah. So, salty well, things are important. <laughs> yes. Oh, God, I'm so hungry talking to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank of God, I eat before this interview. Otherwise, I will be like, maybe oh, hungry too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, it's still it's still early here, so. <laughs> but you can eat early. <gasps> that's right. That's right. It's open. I'm going. <laughs> so, that's perfect. But uh, we have done with this interview. Thank you so much to of course my guest here, and uh, let's do it again. Absolutely. When I get to, when I post my tour. I'll yeah. get back in touch with everybody. Yeah, because I'm going to start touring this. It was wonderful yeah. to meet you. Yeah, Send me the link when it comes out. Yeah, I I will send you the link and uh, put the tag everywhere. And, Good. Uh, let's, okay, it's honey, coming out so uh, when? On, uh, next week. But for the people okay. who are watching this interview, it's today. <laughs> but thank you Go so eat much. some pasta. Pasta frisola. Yeah, oh, pasta, pizza, and frisola. everything good. <laughs> but no pineapple. So wonderful to meet you. I'll talk to yeah. you soon, okay? Okay, Ciao. thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye.